The Florida Everglades can sometimes feel overwhelming. The fact that there could be a spot out there that is untouched, untamed by mankind, is what keeps anglers coming back day after day. For me, the stillness that I often find myself in reminds me of what fishing should be. Peaceful, quiet, and unpredictable. An escape from the troubles of everyday life. Swimming around in this murky, tinted water are disturbers of the peace, creators of chaos, the Florida snook. Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? These fish are masters of making. Guys, look at that tank. Florida Everglades. And ruining your day. Oh my God. Today, I experienced a roller coaster of emotions battling these backwater monsters, and I did it in the greatest place on earth. Slot snook. That's another slot snook. It's a big boy, guys. This is bigger than I thought. Might be a big redfish. Beautiful fish right there. Probably 26, maybe 27. The Everglades is literally insane. It's actually insane. Artificial at 11 o'clock almost. The trips down south typically start early. Today's wake up call was 4.15. I hopped out of bed, made a quick breakfast, grabbed some coffee, and made a sandwich that I knew I wasn't going to eat until I was off the boat and the job was finished. The next stop was the gas station, 5.25 a.m. on the clock, topped off the boat with fuel for our long run, and headed to the road. I arrived at the ramp at 6.30. Greeted by a sunrise so pretty that no matter what happened on the water, I was going to have a good day. I took off, cutting through the water on our way to catch some snook and redfish, but was greeted by pods of rolling tarpon instead. Alrighty guys, I was making the run south, bunch of tarpon rolling on the gulf side. Baitbuster, let's see what happens. I was then hit with the first punch of the day, an unresponsive Minn Kota remote forcing me to use my phone to control the trolling motor for the rest of the day. Trolling motor is not working. All right, well, trolling motor remote is just tripping, but we have my phone, thankfully. I spent the next 30 minutes watching these beautiful fish go about their morning routine. But truthfully, big tarpon aren't a fish that I have figured out yet. So with no luck, we ran further south, throwing topwaters along the way. Missed. By the time 9.30 rolled around, I was pretty depressed. Zero fish in the boat, a lot of fuel burned, and a dwindling plan unfolding. That's when things changed, and it turned out to be the most outrageous day of fishing I've ever had in my life. Alrighty guys, well, enough messing around. Time to get on some fish. We're here for a reason. We're fishing a spot right now. I'm super excited for guys. We got stuff blowing up. Just a line, we have oysters. When this slow tide, this place is out of the water. And now I think there's gonna be lots of fish. Gotta work with the phone. Not the easiest thing. I wish I had the remote, but that being said, let's get on some fish. My goal is to try to flip it up in this shade. It's summertime, these fish are gonna be hiding up in there. That is a shark right there. Yep, those things, there's no shortage of those. We'll say at least the Minn Kota has that north button where it kind of locks your heading. Having to constantly fiddle with the phone would be very annoying. If I'm cruising the line, I can just set it, which is nice. It's 
decent little snook. This so only came off. Slot snook. Just shook it. Oh, that's killer. I'd rather have him snap me than shake it. It's because I have to fiddle with the trolling motor so much, man. I'm trying to, I like turned it off. Hmm. That was a slot snook. Oh my gosh, guys. I didn't stick them. I turned the trolling motor off. I was in a power pole. But I had to stop the trolling motor. Oh, it's so tough. Right at this creek mouth. I knew there'd be a big fish there. On a day that's kind of been like today where just nothing feels like it, it feels like nothing's gone right. I really needed that one in the boat. But I think there's other big fish around here, man. I don't know if you guys could tell, I got that thing so far up in there. And when I cast it, I almost landed on him. He was making some like noise. Literally watched that hook come out in like slow motion. It's a nice snook right there. There's a couple of nice snook on top right here. You can see him swimming right there. Not the best way to attack this is. All right, so I just saw a couple decent little snook kind of up top right there. So I'm gonna cruise back in this creek a little bit. The tide is moving through here. As I started heading back into this isolated Everglades Creek, I had no clue that the coolest snook bite I've ever seen was about to happen. That snook. Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What was that? First of all, I can't hook anything. Second of all, that snook was just like rolled on its side. I threw my gulp right at him. Dude, freaking kamikaze's down for it. Oh my goodness, that was another slot snook. Guys, this is insane. That was insane. That was the coolest snook you'd have ever seen. I thought he spooked. I'm gonna pitch every single one of these. Literally flew after that gulp. He was. He acted like I wasn't even there. Probably 45 seconds later, I saw the exact same thing. A massive snook sitting right under the mangroves on top of the water. That snook. That's another slot snook. Power poles are down. It's a big boy, guys. This is bigger than I thought. Are you kidding me? The trolling motor. Are you kidding me? The trolling motor. That was a low 30 snook. I spot, I, I put the power poles down and I can't, I don't have the remote, the, the trolling motor, my phone is off. So I can't just click it to make sure it's off. Oh my, all we can do is just retie and try again. I mean, that is the third slot snook I've missed in like 50 yards. There's more in here. That one was the biggest one by far. That one was low 30s. This is madness, guys. This is literally madness. I'm putting on 40 pound leader. They don't care about the leader. That snapped at the braid though. Got caught in the trolling motor. I gotta lift it up, make sure it's all right. I mean, that's user error. There's nothing, nothing I can say about that. I'll take full blame for that. I, I was putting my rod tip low. He was digging under the boat. I thought I was all right. I thought I was low enough. I saw it get kind of caught in there. I knew I was cooked, 15 pound braid. Now GoPro's overheating on me. Guys, you throw it at these snook and they don't even, they don't even care. They just demolish it. I've been sight casting them in these mangroves. They're like up top, it's super cool. Alrighty guys, well I am just on an, I am just selling so hard right now. To be fair, some of the circumstances are not really in my favor. It's trolling motor, but I am literally sight casting 30 plus inch snook in the Florida Everglades. The current's kind of slacked out a little bit. Look at these two little guys. Pretty cool. I've hooked snook bigger than those guys today. 
in this same creek. I think we're right at the high tide right now. It's kind of slacking out. I hope that doesn't affect it. My guess is it will. The snook were kind of swimming against the current almost. My fear ended up coming true. The current slacked out in a major way, providing these snook with no way of swimming against it like they were 10 minutes ago. While I was leaving the creek, I couldn't help but think about how crazy it is that the creek I'm currently in is as untouched as a mangrove creek can be, 30 plus miles south of any civilization, holding happy fish that clearly don't see much pressure. Yeah, at least we finally got a snook in the boat. But we're just gonna work these mangrove lines, flip them, and work to another creek, which hopefully is like the other one. Yeah, guys, super unfortunate day so far. I mean, missed three slot snook. Uh, one of them, I think, was 100% due to the trolling motor being messed up. But at the end of the day, I should have just walked them up front, I guess. Also, it's just big inconvenience using that using that phone. Not the most ideal thing, but at the end of the day, I came all the way down here. We're gonna make it work. I've got to get you guys a nice snook. But that last hook set, that uh, that snook that snapped me off in the mangroves or in the trolling motor, he, I, I knew he ate it, and I was like, I missed the other two hooks. Just pulled. I was like, I am gonna set the hook into this guy. Set the hook. They kind of come like belly up. Those, it's such a, I mean, you can't get better than that, man. Hopefully we get to do that a couple more times today. Look at all the ladyfish straight ahead. It's actually unreal. What I love about a gulp too is you can flip it in these places and like compared to a swim bait that you have to reel, you can just let it sit there, twitch it. If there's a snook, gives them more time to eat it or more time to reject it. So, I mean, there's benefits and negatives, but I like this right here. There's some current coming out of this little creek right here. There's some shade, which in summer, that's what you want. Slot snook. Snook. Might be overslot. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I literally might cry right now. 35 inch snook, Florida Everglades 35 inch snook. <sighs> guys, guys, we're 0 for 4 on massive snook. I can't, I literally, look at that thing. I mean, what is happening? I can't even process what's happening right now. 40 pound leader, he frayed through it. I had him in, I had him half in the net. I literally had him in the net. Oh my gosh, guys, I am in absolute shambles right now. I am in absolute shambles. I hooked into him. He was a literal tank. I thought it was under like a Jewfish or something. I'm shaking, I'm literally shaking. All right, here goes nothing. I knew that was gonna happen sooner or later. Trying to net, with this net, trying to net him by myself is literally impossible. They don't even fit in the net. Guys, if you're watching this, subscribe and like this video. I, I need some positive support from mental health. Oh my goodness. I think the good man upstairs had some pity on me because literally the next cast, this happened.
Kind of feels catfishy. Might be a big redfish. It's exactly what it is. Stay out of there. Stay out of there. This thing's a tank. Hopefully a shark doesn't even get him. Obviously I'm right next to a stick. Here goes take two. Oh my gosh guys, I did it. Can you guys give me a high five? Where's my gold star? Where's my gold star? I caught a fish. Oh my gosh, and it's a beautiful one at that. Guys, I'm not even like, it has been a tough day. Look at that fish, man. Look at that fish. Probably 26, maybe 27. Beautiful fish right there. As I'm saying, I need something for my mental health. <laughs> Dude. This day, I'm gonna get him back in the water and I'll talk to you guys. <sighs> Absolute debrief time. Guys, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? I'm not even like excited about that. I just, I can't even process what's going on. <sighs> I, I'm throwing a three inch gulp down here in the Everglades. I've lost four slot snook, one over slot snook. So three slots, one over slot, maybe two over slots. That last one was literally probably 34, 35 inches. And I'm like, genuinely can't even, I'm trying to comprehend that. And I just get smoked by a 26, 27 inch redfish. I don't know what's happening. All I know is the Everglades is literally insane. It's actually insane. Artificial at 11 o'clock almost, 10.30. I don't know, man. All I know is we're gonna keep getting on him. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go, man. All right, we ran out of natural shrimp, which has just been killing them. New penny. Let's go. That camera just died. Maybe I should've just tried to mouth grab that snook. Didn't even cross my mind. Oh. I wonder if that's that redfish was what was blowing up. Cause something blew up there. I thought it was a snook. I cast it right at it. After spending the next five minutes trying to get my gulp out of a tree, there was no more creek mouths dumping out water. I decided it was time to start running north along the coast back to the ramp, stopping at places I thought there might be fish. Water is super clear for the beach, at least. There's that oyster bar right there. It's almost like the outgoing isn't hasn't started here. There's no water flow. Which is strange. It's a nice redfish. I just boot the big redfish. He's probably mid to upper 20s. He's just cruising along in the bottom. Redfish, sight casted redfish on the sand, guys. 
That's pretty awesome. Beautiful little guy. Here's this little beach redfish. Catch release. Oh, it's always pretty seeing the color changes. That one I caught in the backwaters, then you look at this guy. Beautiful colors right there, super white. Let's get a release. Oh, quick release right there. Guys, sight cast, that was beautiful. But there was a bigger one than that, so I'm gonna get back to it. See if there's anything else back in this bay. It's crazy how still they are. Like, also it's awesome. The Everglades, like that thing. I may, may have never seen a bait. Like all the fish today, man. It can be hard to find them, but if you do, these fish are more responsive down here. They, they're, they're hungry, they want to eat. I ended up, I cast it away from them, like I would have done in like Naples or like Caloosahatchee area, Mat Lache, and It's a big head wake up there. Oh my God, that was a massive snark. Guys, this is insane. I literally turn to my left, see a massive head wake, cast directly on it, and a massive snark just destroyed it. He's definitely gone. Just didn't get a hook in him. I am now 0 for 5 on snook. That's what I was, I was just talking about how responsive they are. I literally just cast it on that fish's head. I think it was a big snook. He looked super white, but also the redfish are gonna be super white here too. I'm grabbing this one in the mouth. Oh my gosh. Let's go guys. God is good. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Best fishing day I've ever had in my life. Look at this fish. Look at that fish. Best fishing day I've ever had in my life. 100%, this is absolutely unreal. Guys, look at that tank. Florida Everglades, beach snook. Absolute monster. Oh my gosh. Literally just have to thank God. This is just so unreal. Look at that fish, man. Literally insane. He has to be 30. Oh, 30 on the dot. Guys, just blind casted. Sight casted at one. Ended up blind casting at this one. I'm gonna read tie real quick, guys. That is just God helping me out. He's seen me extremely down bad today. He's like, you know, man, his creations, the snook, have gotten the best of me by far. They have bested me today, that is for sure. To end with a 30 inch snook on the beach, after all that trouble, is insane. That's why you gotta be careful with those releases. That's a five foot shark, another big shark. 
so many of them down here. Yeah, guys, what a day. Cannot, I mean, this is the best day fishing I've had in a while. Obviously, I wish I landed some of those more snook, but we got our slot, got our slot redfish, and it is shallow. Gosh, iced water, so hot out. After that last snook, the rest of the line was pretty unfruitful. I decided to keep running back towards the ramp and was greeted by the regularly scheduled afternoon rainstorm. After making it through the storm safely, I decided to try one more spot. Unfortunately, the tide had moved out too much and I had very little water to work with. So I decided it was time to wrap it up and head home. Well guys, woo, you probably just heard that. It's 12.50. Nice half, nice half day. Um, I'm gonna head home. Guys, I mean, that was actually probably the most fun, interesting fishing trip I've ever had in my life. It was absolutely unreal. The Everglades, if you've never fished here, can be tough because everything looks so good. Um, there's so much areas to fish. But really today, with that outgoing tide, I kept it simple and I was like, I'm trying to find areas, not just straight up mangrove lines, the places I stopped, had creek mouths that were dumping out water and that's where we hooked all those snook were in the creeks and then we hooked that big one at the creek mouth and then we hooked that monster 35 over slot inch red over slot snook right in a little creek that was feeding water absolutely unfortunate i did not have someone else on the boat i one obviously would have gotten that fish i had him in the net almost and like i actually just had him by the boat for 20 seconds he cut through but that shows, I mean, I need to, next time you see a video, I'm probably gonna have a new net on the boat. Also, I gotta know, should've just grabbed him. You know what I mean? Should've just grabbed him with my hand. I did it with the last snook, worked a lot better. That's what I do on the skiff. I don't even have a net on the skiff. It's just easier. Um, but you live and you learn, but that's gonna haunt me for quite some time. I mean, overslot snook. I haven't gotten an overslot snook on artificial in a minute. It's extremely tough, especially down here in Southwest Florida, on the, in the Everglades especially, but Literally three casts later, God heard me, I guess, and provided a 27 inch redfish that I literally was like, it was the most nonchalant fight ever. He came up and then he was started to smoke me. And honestly, I wasn't even like happy because I assumed he was gonna come off. I saw his hook, barely hooked, and I netted him. I kind of had trouble with that net job too, but thankfully got him and then ended it with that absolutely beautiful snook, cast it on something pushing a heavy wake and he smoked it. I think it was a big snook or a big redfish. And then literally five casts later, just blind casted at a creek mouth again, mangrove line and hooked a stud. He started screaming line. I knew it was game on. He got me around a stick. I thought it was game over. That would have been the nail in the coffin for me. But 30 inch snook, slot snook, middle slot, just beautiful fish. He was so white. The three slot snook I've gotten in the last three Everglades videos, all super white super pretty looking but with that being said guys i mean genuinely one of the most fun more interesting days i've ever had super blessed to be able to get down here i'm gonna be down here probably once or twice more this week so hopefully those will be videos too i need to get on big tarpon we saw a bunch we were around a bunch this morning but couldn't make it happen but i'm gonna figure that out because that's my next goal definitely need someone on the boat for that if i can't land a slot snook i'm not gonna be able to land a 100 pound tarpon by the boat but anyways that's gonna be the next goal is getting something like that big tarpon or whatever but i appreciate you guys god bless uh you guys are awesome this video is so fun and i cannot wait to go edit it hopefully when you guys are seeing this you were blown away you enjoyed it a lot if you did please subscribe like it and comment down below your favorite part of the video um my guess is it'll probably be me just absolutely selling on the, the land job of that massive snook but or it could be me if you're positive holding up that big stud, you know what I mean? But anyways, let me know your favorite part of the video down below. Um, like, subscribe, subscribes help a lot. And we're almost at 2K, which is awesome. 
been doing this for about six, seven months. Uh, my goal is 6K by 60 videos. I think we're past, we're on track to beat that. So, but anyways, appreciate you guys. God bless. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. And, and I'm going to make this run back down the beautiful coast. Probably got about 15 more miles. So appreciate you guys. God bless. Awesome day. Let's go.